Okay, hi everyone. Uh, something happened over this past week on uh, Tuesday, August 20th, and that was Gamescon 2024. I had the absolute honor of co-streaming it. I do not regret that. However, I noticed a trend happening within the gaming space, and I'm not sure if any other people have taken notice of it, but it piqued my interest. Netflix and Prime Video Game Titles. I saw a lot of those. And listen, I knew about Netflix games. I have had my own personal experience with that. It's not out on PC. However, it's more of like a mobile based gaming hub, if you will. It made me sign into my Netflix like four times and it like still didn't let me play Grand Theft Auto. So that's always a fun time. But Prime Video having games and not just like video game series becoming TV shows. I'm talking about full-blown games being released on streaming services. It's concerning to me, to say the least, when it comes to a situation like this, because, you know, we had gone through so many stages of video games from physical copies to digital to now subscription-based. And I fear that history is going to repeat itself again when it comes to cloud gaming as well. You're basically paying so much more for one game that you would want. For example, let's say you're really into, I don't know, Bully. And it's locked behind a subscription paywall. So what's usually like a $20 game is now going to cost you like a hundred and something bucks annually if you don't pay monthly, which is quite shitty. Especially because in the digital age, I mean, you have it forever. Unless you buy a Ubisoft title, then Lord knows what the fuck's going on with that. You'd be lucky if you had it for a year, to be honest with you. It makes me miss the old physical games that we used to have, which yes, I am old enough to experience that. My 360, I have most of my physical games. And one thing I love about them, they don't change and I own them and I can touch them and I see the disc and guess what? I don't have to worry about it randomly vanishing from my hands despite paying full price for it back in the day when I was a little girl, all right? That's what I love about it. Subscriptions? They could shut down tomorrow. They could shut down right now. And then guess what? Boom, your so like your video games? Abandonware, which I don't wish on my own enemy, like my own enemy, man, all right? The Sims 2, it became Abandonware such a long time ago, and I'm never gonna be able to get The Sims 2 unless I pirate it. I can't imagine that happening for all subscription-based games. Cause listen, the Xbox Game Pass PlayStation has their own version of that. I'm not worried about that. Why is streaming video services buying games and having them be exclusive? They don't have any controllers, granted. I've never tried Prime Video Games, mostly because why the- who the fuck- <laughs> who the fuck plays them? It's, it just seems like a really sad comeback for like Stadia. If you guys remember what that was, it was a cloud streaming service that went to compete with, uh, I think it was NVIDIA's cloud-based game service? And it went out of business after like four years. I, Granted, I don't know if any of it became abandonware. I know the bigger titles, thankfully, like Red Dead Redemption, they allowed you to redeem one copy for any other platform that it was out on, which is a W Rockstar moment, which doesn't happen often. So when it does, it's a good day. So anyway, we aren't going to go to Netflix to play one of our favorite games, like the definitive edition. Have the, uh, like the definitive editions not released on Steam and the Rockstar launcher, we weren't going to Netflix to get them because that's crazy. And when I think of Netflix, I think of video TV, not games. I feel like this is just corporate greed at this point. How did we fall so far from grace? Now, I do know there is a website called Stop Killing Games. I'll have that linked in the description truly because it fights for gamer rights and basic consumer rights that we should have had a very long time ago. Because can you imagine... Let's say this, what's an American corporate thing? Ah, crumble cookies. I don't know why I think of them, but their cookies look fucked. Imagine you're sitting down eating your crumble cookie and then all of a sudden it's like, hey. <laughs> so uh, that cookie has like an oven and we're gonna shut down the oven that you, like, you know, the cookie was made in. So uh, you can't have the cookie anymore. 
What? I'd be pissed. I'd be like, oh, I paid for the cookie. I should be able to have the cookie. And it's like, no, I'm sorry. The oven, we don't have it anymore. We're going to have to discontinue your cookie. Like, throw it back up. That's insane. And it's the same logic. And the fact that we are going down this path of not being able to own our games and basically leave it up to companies like EA, like Ubisoft, Activision, Rockstar, all of those video game companies that I just said have their own subscription service. And let's be honest, they kind of flopped because I don't know one person that's subscribed to GTA Plus most importantly, I haven't heard Rockstar talk about GTA Plus in the past four months since GTA 6 was released. They're going to get left in the dust. As I'm sure every other subscription-based service except for maybe the Xbox Game Pass and the PlayStation version of that will be left in the dust. Those two will be fine, but the, the others? There's no point. Don't subscribe. That's it. That's all I got. Stop subscribing to this shit. Thank you. Bye-bye.